brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. The eyes of Catholics have firmly been fixed on the mess that is the Synod in Germany, perhaps the most infamous of all the synods going on in the worldwide Synod on Synodality, which is Rome's attempt to level the church and functionally erase the sacred priesthood as something that is set apart from the rest of humanity. It's an attempt to bring all of the faithful up to a similar level as the priest. But while our eyes have been fixed on bishops in Germany who brag about their bathing suit vacations, back in America, Francis is sending some of his assistants to endorse on his behalf a group in America that has been formally rejected by the American bishops. They are a group celebrated by Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church because they are cut from the same cloth as he, and that subject that he has a strange fixation on. Today, I'll go over this story and frame it with another story that was largely ignored. Francis's voice in America is claiming essentially that traditional Catholics are schismatics and heretics. So let's get into this story because those things are connected. There are principally four sins that cry out to heaven for justice, depriving a worker of his just wage, the unjust taking of a life, oppression of the poor, and what we typically call the Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church sin. Those sins are often included among denying the Holy Ghost as sins that cry out to heaven and are spread throughout sacred scripture. But these sins are serious and the church opposes them all. But there has been a movement in the church in recent years to make the church accept that last sin and in so doing reject the inerrancy of sacred scripture. There's a reason I refer to it as the Pastor Jimmy Martin's sin, and it's because he's the primary cheerleader of efforts by those who preach heresy to make the church accept such sins. It's his pastoral mission, if we want to call it that, and one that certainly is leading many, many souls astray. He is pals with a group called New Ways Ministry, which I'll get to in a moment, and his deep influence in the Roman Curia has led Francis to practically recognizing this organization as valid, as evidenced by this next story, which comes to us from Crux, which professes to be taking the Catholic pulse. Headline, Holy Spirit is guiding church on synod, Vatican official tells pastor jimmy martin group this is an astonishing story in that francis sent a sister pantsuit type to represent him to a group of this kind that had officially been condemned by the church and she came preaching the message of the synod in an official capacity from rome and using the synod to promote their message from the article quote the main protagonist in the catholic church's two-year synodal process now underway is the holy spirit who is ready to guide us on this journey Xavier missionary sister Natalie Bequar told a U.S. audience April 3rd, the aim of a synod is to foster communion and build a consensus. Bequar said that said to an audience made up primarily of James Martin Catholics via Zoom from Rome, if we really want to listen to another, if we listen deeply, we will discern how the Holy Spirit is calling the church to move forward. About a thousand people from 37 countries participated in the online event sponsored by New Ways Ministry. The organization's executive director, Francis de Barnardo, called it historic that a Vatican official was addressing a James Martin audience. He welcomed the undersecretary and participants and was moderator of the session that lasted just over an hour. End quote. That's called burying the lead, folks. They neglected to mention that New Ways Ministry has been repeatedly condemned by the church for rejecting the church's teaching on the matrimonial sacrament. Case in point, in 2010, the USCCB issued a scathing but technical-sounding indictment of the group, which contained this gem, quote, New Ways Ministry has recently criticized efforts by the church to defend the traditional definition of reception and limitation of the nuptial sacrament, and has urged Catholics to support secular initiatives to establish Pastor Jimmy Martin unions. No one should be misled by the claim that New Ways Ministry provides an authentic interpretation of Catholic teaching and authentic Catholic pastoral practice. Their claim to be Catholic only confuses the faithful regarding the authentic teaching and ministry of the church with respect to persons with Pastor Jimmy Martin tendencies. Accordingly, I wish to make it clear that, like other groups that claim to be Catholic but deny, but deny central aspects of church teaching, New Ways Ministry has no approval or recognition from the Catholic Church and that they cannot speak on behalf of the Catholic faithful in the United States. End quote. Clearly, I had to play with the language there, thanks to the sensitivities of our hosts. Now, they clearly have some recognition by the church because Francis is sending a high-ranking nun to visit them in an official visit. That's absolutely constitutes them being declared valid by the powers that be in Rome. 
But let's continue with the article because there's a reason the nun is speaking to New Ways Ministry at the Synod on Synodality. Quote, part of the synodal process is rediscovering church as community in which we all have to be the protagonist. Jimmy Martin family seek to do just that, Shine said, telling the speaker, your presence here is a sign our church leaders are increasingly ready to walk with us. That quart opened her talk by listening. A listening church is a church that begins by listening, she said. She asked participants to take a minute of silence to think and reflect on one word or one image that best described what synodality is for you in the church. Then she invited participants to share this in the Zoom chat area. Their words flooded in. Discernment, hopeful dialogue, openness, empowerment, oneness, authentic listening, grassroots takeover, excitement, humility, engaged, correction, community, diversity, welcome, understanding, acceptance, affirmation, listening with our hearts, and respect for the laity. She called participants' attention to the first sentence of the synod preparatory document. The Church of God is convoked in synod. These words emphasize the need, importance of listening to everybody, especially those who feel they have no voice, those from the margins, she said. A synodal church is about communion, participation, and mission, as the document in the synod theme state, Beckwart said. These are three inseparable keys at the heart of a synodal church, where participation in the church's missionary synodality to serve the world must be shared by all, she added. In the Zoom chat, some participants expressed trepidation over the synod process. Others said they were wary. A few said they weren't convinced even if the church listens to Jimmy Martin Catholics. It will make much difference for those who felt marginalized by the church and the pain this has caused them. End lengthy quote. There's a goofy idea making the rounds right now that Francis has had a conversion of heart and had to tear the church down in order to rebuild it with the help of the Holy Ghost. That he somehow has defeated the evil powers of the world that are trying to reduce the church to a glorified NGO by having it reject the truths of the faith. Sorry, but that's not even remotely close to being true. What we have here is an admission by Francis's hand-picked representatives that the church is going to recognize the sins that cry out to heaven for justice as being somehow a good thing, a good expression of Catholic identity. That should concern everyone, but it doesn't because so few truly believe that these things are being directed from the top. If while I was reading that quote from above, you thought it came from the synodal way in Germany, you'd be forgiven for thinking so. But no, it came from America, which means the errors of the German bishops are certainly not limited to the German bishops' conference, but are so widespread that Rome is even pushing them here. None of that should be surprising. This brings to mind a meme that the more skilled modernists are promoting that the opposition to Francis is out of hatred for Vatican II. Not quite. Certainly most traditional Catholics would agree that there has been no better representation of the spirit of Vatican II than Francis, and few trads hold Vatican II in any positive regard, but Francis would do what he does even in a pre-Vatican II church if he had been elevated to the papacy before the council. The laws of the church don't really seem to matter to him, but this idea is repeated by the lay voice for Francis, Massimo Fascioli, in his piece in the National Catholic Reporter a couple of days ago. Headline, opposition to Pope Francis is rooted in a rejection of Vatican II. Apparently it isn't because traditional Catholics reject the innovations of the past few decades and instead cling faithfully to what was always taught before. No, but out of some ideological stance instead, Massimo begins by giving a modernist history of Vatican II where he subtly places the blame for the rise of rigid neo-Pharisees on Benedict XVI of all people, then goes on to blame the rise of traditional Catholicism in the past few years, not on Francis, but on ideology. From his article, quote, The interruption in the reception of Vatican II has become a crisis of ecclesial communion during the pontificate of Francis. But this started even before the beginning of his pontificate. The neoconservative and neo-traditionalist voices within the U.S. Episcopate felt orphaned suddenly on February 11, 2013, when Benedict XVI announced his resignation. There were orphans of Benedict's pontificate in the Roman Curia among bishops, theologians, and politicians. But this sense of loss was particularly acute in the U.S. because of the largely mistaken feeling that Joseph Ratzinger, Benedict XVI, had turned the table on Vatican II, the expectation that he had settled forever the disputation on the interpretation of the council as prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine, or CDF, of the faith first, and then as Pope. This is based on the fact that the elevation of Pope Francis on March 13, 2013, has indubitably changed the landscape of the church, and especially of the debate on Vatican II. From the very first weeks and months of his pontificate, Pope Francis showed a full and unequivocal reception of Vatican II, 
Also, thanks to the theological and ecclesiastical debate on Vatican II, which in these last 50 years never ceased to be part of the real life of the universal church. Faithful to the intuitions of Vatican II, which are expressed in only a partial manner in the final documents of the Council, Francis speaks of the theological value of spiritual poverty as a condition for accepting the gospel of Jesus Christ and proposes a radical and continuous need for the church and Christians to be next to the poor in the sense of existential and economic poverty. This emphasis on social justice is part of Francis's ecclesiology, an ecclesiology of the people of God, that has clear implications also on the level of a more conciliar style and structure of church government. Francis talks about a greater collegiality with the bishops and synodality at various levels in the church. Francis's documents and gestures of dialogue with that other militant faith in the Holy Land parallel only with John Paul II's documents and gestures of dialogue with our elder brothers. End lengthy quote. In other words, Benedict tried to scale back Vatican II, and Francis is really doing the work of the council, finally 50 years after the close of the council. And by implication, anyone who objects to the excesses of these past few decades, but especially these past few years under Francis, is a schismatic. This is the meme that is being promoted by the mouthpieces for Francis, and this is happening while New Way's ministry is being informally welcomed into the fold by Rome, which sends a signal to the USCCB to stop opposing them in Jimmy Martin's work in America. This is a mind-boggling demonstration of the state of the church, and few are picking up on it. Those who oppose the sins condemned by the church are outside the church by this twisted logic. Talk about engaging in mental gymnastics. But that has been Massimo's MO for some time. He was one of the first to admit that the ecclesiology of the post-conciliar era was not compatible with traditional Latin mass, which is a fine and fancy way of stating that what Vatican II wrought was functionally a new religion. So, of course, he's going to be hostile to anyone who has and advocates for the authentic faith. What did you think of all of this? Well, let me know in the comments, please. What should be done about New Way's ministry, given that Francis is endorsing them publicly now? Has Francis become a great and traditional pope? And I would think so if only I saw with the eyes of Catholic charity that I'm in the wrong here. Let me know in the comments, please, and like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.